Hello, everybody, and now we're here again, returning to the wonderful world of Pellucidor. Here, we will find about Pellucidor and Edgar Rice Burroughs, the second book in the Pellucidor series, the first being At the Earth's Core. This book, and this is a lovely edition, um, a lovely ace edition, very nice spine, as you can see. Pages are a bit... Oh, God, this book smells so fucking good. Oh, my f fucking God. This book smells like vanilla, pipe tobacco, and typical old paperback page mill deal. Oh my god. It's like, it smells like an old library. Oh my god. That just smells terrific. Doesn't smell good unless you open it. Oh! Just smells like history, if that makes any sense. Okay, so Pellucidor. This book is... Um, a very the one thing you can say about Edgar Rice Burroughs is that if he has a story to tell, like a overarching story, he fucking ties shit together good. Because if you remember in the last book, we had this amazing cliffhanger, okay, where um, and spoilers abound. So fuck off if you don't want spoilers. Um, David gets in the iron mole with um, his his um, honeypot, D and the Beautiful. Only to find out that after they have left, that D and the v Beautiful was um, switched out w by Huja the Sly One with a mahar. So now David takes this mahar to the crust to the outer world our world now some of the stuff about this the um interaction the small interaction between david and the mahar are actually really fucking good and the mahar like noticing this new world is fucking fascinating. Now, the one thing that kind of, like, gets me a little bit is it makes you think, like, well, if there is other ways, which we're going to find out quite shortly in the series, other ways out of Pellucidor onto our Earth, like, and the Mahars are as intelligent as they are, haven't the Mahars found this um, entry? Like, isn't this like a thing? Um, so there's that. But um, the idea of seeing this new world through the eyes of a Mahar who thought that they were the end-all be-all of evolution um, is kind of shocking. And then when they get back, after David gets all of his shit... Um, and comes back. It's so funny. Like one of the big things is is um, the loss of a compass in this book. And after all the fucking shit, like David brings back, if he only would have brought like maybe a bag of compasses, maybe things would have gone a lot easier for them. But no, he brought a compass, um, as you do. When they get back to Pellucidor, um, he lets the Mahar go. He's like, yeah, you know, kick rocks, beat it. And um, this plays into um, something that happens a little bit later. So, like, Burroughs is so good about, like, paying shit off. Like, so many writers could learn. If you want to learn how to fucking, like, hook readers and then pay shit off, like, multiple times in a book or even in a series... 
fucking this series is so good with paying shit off. It's so good. Like there is shit from the first book that kind of comes back to haunt them. Um at least a couple times in here, which is just it's so satisfying as a reader to um see that attention to detail put into something. And as a writer, it makes you fucking jealous because you're like, oh, this motherfucker is fucking killing it. I need to up my fucking game. And that's exactly what any writer should think when they're reading Edgar Rice Burroughs because he does it so flawlessly. It's so simple when he does it. So, yes, um, all aspiring writers need to read how he does this because it's fucking magical. Now, if you remember in my last video, I had a bit of a... I don't know if it's a theological problem or, um, I don't know. I mean, like right off the bat, like you have to really suspend your disbelief. And I mean, this goes for the Barsoom books too. Like Edgar Rice Burroughs is not a scientist. Okay. Like he has some cool ideas and probably a lot of his ideas came from reading like, Ooh, look at this new thing that we came, that we found out. Um, about the world using this little thing called science, you know, and he probably put that into his shit. But um, the science isn't brilliant, okay? But once you understand and just, like, agree that this is the world that you're reading in, fucking hell, dude. Like, hold on to your fucking hats, man. But, so the first book, you have these guys in a world that is unknown to them and they're just trying to escape basically but then as this goes they realize <clears throat> that maybe they don't want to escape and then we have this whole little bit where okay so if we stayed here it would not be very hard to like control all these people run this whole fucking planet it, it's like this whole like imperialistic shit that really like makes you cringe a little bit and it, like i guess in the 20s it kind of still had that wild west feel to it but even in the 20s we just got out of world war one like is an imperialistic fucking like march to take over the world like is that really something that people are gonna dig like it it's just um i don't know man it it just it leaves such a a bad taste in your mouth so this first whole bit like and it's basically the first two-thirds of this book <clears throat> where now that um david has all his shit and he's got like guns and shit now like look out motherfucker i got guns you know no one's passing any fucking gun reform down here in pellucidor we're making our own fucking rules like you you have all this shit and like it's super exciting and like the rescue of dn and the jumping off the cliff we even have like um like an arctic kind of bit where him and um abner are um like it's just it's really fucking good like there's so much good shit and then he like befriends people on an island and um there's this whole other thing there's a lot of like maritime shit going on in here there's so much happening in this book and it happened so fast it's like motherfucker i'm gonna punch you in the god it was like all this stuff and then we get to the part where he's like oh yeah i have defeated who's the sly one so now what am i gonna do oh i'm gonna systematically um take over this whole fucking place and so we get like little bits and like there's this bit and i know like, I brought it up in the last video. But, like, there's even a bit where Burroughs realizes what he's saying is, like, okay, like, maybe this um, imperialistic takeover of Pellucidor 
isn't the best idea. You know, like we should be doing things to help advance their culture, not um, make them like horrible people or terrified. You know, and it, it's just this this weird thing where, like, and this could go back to if you are so inclined. Like, reading the letters back and forth between Robert E. Howard and H.P. Lovecraft about the civilization versus barbarism debate that they had, which was really fucking good. And the fucking thing that, like, cracks me up the most about that is that a fucking um, dude from Texas um, managed to um, nail the fucking like put the exclamation point on the conversation against civilization. Uh, I don't, I don't know. That's a whole other thing we probably shouldn't get into right now, but, um, just the whole idea about, um, this makes this part of the book really hard for me to swallow because they could have at the same time, just stayed there and probably been kings okay if they really wanted power without bringing any of their fucking firearms or any of their fucking shit into Pellucidor they probably could have just been there and still had all the power that they wanted okay like they were they were very highly regarded but to go get all this stuff and then go, oh, we're going to make trains, we're going to teach them religion, we're going to fucking do all this shit to fuck the whole goddamn fucking inner earth thing up, it just, like, really, like, kind of breaks my heart. Like, I prefer an underdog story more than a story that is like, hey, this is how I took over a planet. Like, fuck, dude. And I know, like, John Carter's kind of the same thing, like the warlord of Mars and all that stuff. But with the John Carter books, um, I feel like, not that he was an unwilling participant, but it was like those things happened and he was put into that position. It wasn't like him down in the center of the earth going, hmm, or him on Mars going, hmm, how can I like fix this for my own gain and in doing so say i'm doing it to help push civilization forward it's like what the fuck are you talking about so that is the the thing with this book that is always going to irk me it's going to irk me um but other than that i fucking love this book like and more so than this book i love this series and um, there's going to be some, like, twists and turns that happen from here on out that are kind of... Uh, but Burroughs does a really good job of trying to tie everything back together. And um, even though there are going to be some threads that are left open, like, forever, until um, the Burroughs estate has people finish those stories off. Um, but like, I love this world. I love the whole idea of it. So, um, I, this it still is my favorite Burroughs series. So I, I highly recommend these books. Like they're so fucking cool. And, um, next time we're going to do Tanar of Pellucidor. Um, and then I think after that we get into, um, Tarzan at the Earth's core, which like, starts a fucking string of events that cannot be stopped um but anyway so um what do you think of this book what do you think of this series are you digging it um what's your favorite burrow series i'm sure i asked that question before but um you know keep answering it so until next time everybody oh make sure you join my damn page here subscribe join button join and you get extra shit, and there's videos about it, and I'll talk about it better when I learn how to sell myself better. So I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.